crafting with Carrie here. Um, so this is my um, Goodwill find. I went shopping looking for, I don't know what I was looking for. And I found this gigantic clock. Um, this is 21 inches in diameter. Um, so it's got this nice two inch black ring. And my initial thought was, okay, I'm just gonna clean this up. I'll do a painting on the back, put the arms back on, so cover up all the numbers, and then put the plastic, or make clean off the plastic, and then put a battery in. Well, that was fine and dandy, and you can see a couple of them until I took, okay, so I couldn't see through this, the plastic at all. It's thinking, okay, there's either an extra piece of plastic on here, or someone's really like jacked it up. So when I looked at this, I didn't see all of these bubbles. So when I found all the bubbles, I was like, all right, I'll just do the back. Well, then I found this piece. I was like, all right, that's not gonna work. So plan C, I took the clock mechanism off of the clock backing and I and then when I cleaned the plexiglass, I realized it's not gonna get clear. It's gonna be this frosted kind of soft glass. So, or plexi. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna pour on it. Why not? And then put this, drill a hole, put the clock mechanism into um, the plexiglass, put it back into the clock and still have a working clock. Um, but the painting and the clock will be on the plexiglass. So, I don't know, six bucks and some paint. And I've decided to use some leftovers, the only two I did purchase, um, one new paint and um, mix that up fresh. And then the rest of it's leftovers. Um, I, uh, I take that back. I did mix up two more paints, but they're ones I wanna use. So, uh, let's talk about colors. Um, so I've got the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. I have got, um, actually I'm going to start with my darkest. I have the dioxazine purple, um, Liquitex, Liquitex Basics. Uh, two parts Floetrol, one part paint. Um, I'm going to add silicone into the cup itself um, as I pour so I'm not mixing it in my paints. Um, the next lighter is the Craft Smart Metallic Paint in the purple violet. This is one part paint to one part um, Floetrol because it flows a little softer. Um, this is the Artist Loft Ultramarine Blue was my first like true blue purchase. I have didn't have any of those. And Michaels, thank you very much, Michaels, had a buy one, get one half off sale. So couldn't pass it up. Um, that's two parts Floetrol, one part paint. Um, my, one of my favorite metallics, the blue Craft Smart Metallic. This has already been mixed, one part paint, one part Floetrol. I leave it in the tube. I've already filtered it out as well. Um, this is Artist Loft Turquoise, and it's got some iridescent medium put into it. Um, I've had this and haven't used it in a while. Um, again, two parts paint, one part, part Floetrol. I put the iridescent medium in first before, before putting in the Floetrol. So, um, Apple Barrel. Um, it is satin acrylic paint, the Mountain Forest. I did a painting for that for a color challenge and it turned out fabulous. The Apple Barrel Multi-Surface Acapulco, um, again in the satin. The Apple Barrel Gloss True Yellow. It's a bit of it I've got left. My orange, oh, the orange is Liquitex Basics um, with a tad, or it's the uh, cadmium orange with the tad of the cadmium yellow mixed in with it. Um, I made this really pretty maroon for a I, my our school colors. I'm a teacher. Um, our school colors are maroon and gray, so I made this pretty maroon. This is the um, 
I cannot say it, Liquitex Basics Magenta, the, yeah, the Qua Qua, qu qu yep, can't say it. Um, with a little bit of um, violet and a little bit of the cadmium orange in it to kind of balance out those hues. And then it's, um, once I got the paint color the way I wanted it, two parts uh, Floetrol to one part paint. And then my basics, um, Artist Loft Black, two parts paint, one part Floetrol. And Liquitex Basics White. Um, both of them, actually all of the paints now, except for the teal, have been double filtered, double, double strained. So I have found that um, it's not just the Floetrol, it's the paint as well. And using craft paints, I've got to be kind of mindful of it. I went to the dollar or to the dollar store found invested in this very fine mesh. I filter the flow troll as I'm pouring it in, mix the paints in the cup, and then I filter it again before I transfer it into a dish for keeping. So this is what I pour out of, um, or I put it back in the tube. Um, so I rinse this out, reuse this. I like pouring out of these. Um, very nice. Um, so they have all been double filtered except for the maroon and the turquoise. So if I get chunks, that's where it's coming from. And then the last thing, um, so this is on the textured side and not the high shine side. So we'll see how that goes. Um, this is 21 and a half inches across. Sorry, it's going to be slightly, I tried to mount you higher and that didn't work anyway. Um, I'm going to, I call it a reverse pour, pastry bag pour. Um, I'm going to put a puddle of both black and white down. Um, I like sometimes getting their, their bubbles coming up. Um, I've already cut the corner off, twisted the corner, and then put the clip on it. And then what I'll do is I'll fill the pastry bag or, oh wait, the uh, super cheapo um, gallon bag. So it says I need, I'm, I'm guessing, about 12 ounces to cover this. So I found the area of this to be about 345 square inches. Um, I'm a math teacher. I should have my students actually find it for me. Um, tried to find a square canvas that covered similarly. Um, and it was, there was one that was slightly bigger that was um, 15 ounces. Slightly smaller was... Um, 11 ounces. That means I need about 12 ounces of paint. Each one of these little square tubs holds two ounces. Um, each one of the bottles holds two ounces. So I've just got to make sure I've got about six and I've got eight. So I just got to be very mindful. I don't want too much paint. I don't want too little paint. So let's to get to pouring. I do want to, I am going to mix in both um, some treadmill oil And, oh, slippery things. Palmer's coconut oil formula. Um, you know, it has the exact same ingredients as the OGX. Um, was looking for the dimethicone. So, we're going to go with it. I'm going to mix, alternate them. Why not? So, doing the pastry bag. This is going to be, whatever I put in first is actually going to go out and underneath the paint first. So if I do darkest on, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so we'll start with the dioxazine purple. And I think I'm going to try and do two layers of each paint. The metallic purple ooh that's pretty quick squirt yeah i'm not going to like that okay ooh it smells good though the ultramarine ooh it's thick okay The 
Craft Smart Metallic Blue. I'm only going to have about an ounce of this. Let's do my turquoise with the iridescent medium in it. The Mountain Forest. Ooh. I don't really like that one. It is what it is. The Acapulco. Okay. The true yellow gloss finish. So I'm only going to have one layer of that. Scrape some of that out. I may grab. I have some other yellow that has already print. Um, been mixed. I'm just trying to reuse get rid of some paints alright my orange You have some other orange already mixed, so I may use that. Treadmill oil. My pretty maroon. I'm going to put this in a uh, container bottle or a squirt bottle and I'm done here all right let's go back through dioxazine purple my metallic purple a little bit more of the I'm going to need to take that out of that bottle and put it into a different mix bottle. Metallic blue. The green I really don't care for. Treadmill oil. The Acapulco, which I do like. My turquoise. And I was supposed to put that in at a different point. I do have more of that gloss already mixed just, just in the bottle. Um, I will 
use just a scotch of the Craftsmart Neon Orange. Oh, yellow first. Should be about. There. And and with the maroon. Okay. Let's see how it pours. I am going to do just a single like one, two, X pattern in there. Okay, now let's make our puddle. I think that's too much paint. I put the black down first. I want to make sure that um, you cannot see the clock base behind it. So, and then my titanium white. I have determined this is my favorite method for getting cells. Um, I just enjoy it. Anyway, see how this one goes. tip in the paint, pull the clip away, and then I'm going to move it around. I like to keep the paint or the tip down underneath the white. Tend to get more cells that way. I'm going to pinch that up. I'm loving this so far. Okay, I'm going to get my torch. Gosh, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. My goal is to do a very, very, very slow, slow slow tilt bring it back to center So I'm just trying to
don't have to go all, sorry, I should be talking to you. I'm trying to focus, give you as much of a line of sight. I think I'm gonna put it down, give it a minute to kind of go back to normal. I'm so in love with this. So I don't have to go all the way to the edge because the lip of the plexiglass will actually be underneath the plastic. And so my cells have lost some shape because the paints are different thicknesses. And I'm tilting it too quickly. So it is what it is. I mean, I can't undo it now. I can Try, but it's almost like I need more paint. <laughs> I didn't think I needed that much paint. Luckily, I do have some more still in the cup, and I can. Put it in there and okay. Torch that bit. All right, I'm going to have to clearly use some toothpicking and make that make more sense. Actually, if I uh, yeah, definitely some toothpicking.
I'm gonna have to hit that with the dryer as well. Because everything else is so vibrant and that's just, I mean, it's beautiful, but it's muddy. So. see if I can get a little bit more of that off. Maybe a little bit more of my center moved in that direction. Should have done this to begin with, instead of adding more paint. It's okay. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is just go around the edge and I don't have to hit the edge, but I want to make sure that it gets there. So I'm just going to kind of blur the edge all the way around. And then I'm going to torch it one last time. I'm loving how this came out. I hope that the clock mechanism ends up working out. Yes, I'm just smear smearing that edge, and I know. I'm sorry you can't see it. This piece is just too big for my hang it from the kitchen light apparatus. Not sure which direction I intend to hang this, but what I love is that, I mean, you really can't see that I've put black or the white in this. Um, it's kind of what I love about that that method, um, really the titanium white is just so heavy um, that it sinks and 
gives such beautiful cells. So, um, <coughs> I'm going to hit it one last time with the torch. Make sure that there's no more air bubbles. There was a chunk that I saw, but it looks like it poured off. So, So I think considering this is $6 at Goodwill and some leftover paints, this is pretty much masterpiece. So let me get you down and show you a close up. Sorry, I thought I'd hit pause. Love those bright color clusters. Some bubbles are popping up. I like the cell on cell on cell. Those look